Hi everyone, welcome to the first uh, implementation of the progress report for Martian Worlds. Just want to give you guys a quick demo, introduction to the uh, progress so far. Um, so what I have right here is the sun, and it's animated. Um, there's an actual plasma layer as well, so you can actually sink into it, and there's a central core uh, on the planet, uh, sorry, on the sun as well. Um, and I think it's like 10,000 or 100,000 units away. I can't remember now, um, but it's quite far away. But I have this the radius set to 1,000. Um, the radius of this Earth is set to 100 units. Um, so as you can see, the Earth looks big because, well, I'm close to it. Uh, the sun is actually 1,000. So if you were to put that sun next to this thing, it would be, <laughs> obviously be, um, well, that being 1,000, this is uh, 100. You're looking at least 10 times the size, obviously, right? So, I mean, imagine this planet. You can kind of get an We can kind of give you a, a larger. We run up a hill and jump. There we go. Get a better idea of how you can see my shadow. Shadows are real time. So shadows are, are also kind of shaded very, uh, very smoothly. There's a little bit of jittering here and there, but uh, just things to work out. But um, as well, there's real time shadows being cast. So, if, uh, if I go to. See how it slowly dims, right? You can see it really dims nicely. The shadows really start to become predominant as they start blocking the sun more, right? Over the, the crest of the hills. So you can kind of see there's like nice soft shadows here. Uh, the shadow can also cast on to other things as well uh, really nicely. Um, you know, it really looks beautiful. You can see uh, I got the normals as well. This mesh, by the way, is uh, custom mesh. It's not, used any, it's not using any, um, um, what's the best way to say it? It's not using any particular equations to generate it. Um, so what I did is I studied a icosahedron, <laughs> hard to pronounce. Um, but uh, and what it is is basically if you subdivide it, you get kind of a geosphere uh, from it. And what I did is I actually looked at the pattern of that. And rather than, you know, the, there's a lot of overhead and subdivide, 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 and until you get to the level of you know granularity you want. I went a different route. I like to think outside the box. You know, if somebody's going... Somebody's doing A and B. I want to do Z, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, everyone's trying to do some, one thing or the other based on, you know, I, I read this paper, I read this thing, I read that thing, and you know, and they do this and they do that, um, and nobody think bothers to think outside the box. Um, I basically just made it a for loop. Uh, you know, I studied how the uh, the divisions occur on the sphere, how they divide up uh, on various strips in in a radial fashion, and I just created it uh, procedurally. Uh, so I basically start at the top point and I zip around the sphere, creating it, flip uh, the points on the top hemisphere down to the bottom and done. Simple as that. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's easier said than done, right? Anyways, um, so that's what I did. And literally in like, you know, a millisecond or two, like if, or less possibly, I haven't really benchmarked it, but it's pretty fast. Um, I can probably create, you know, hundreds of these planets in like a second for sure. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've created a, a bunch of them pretty fast before, and I can pretty sure it was less than a second. So it's, it's quite fast. Now I'm not talking about the terraforming. I mean, the bumps, I'm not talking about those. I mean, just creating the sphere itself, right? Um, now the texturing is done using a shader, custom shader. And basically the shader says, okay, this is zero. Say it, say, oh, wait, let's find another point here. Here we go. So let's, so let's say this dirt here is zero, right? So if you go plus one, you get grass. If you go minus one, you get, you know, this rock, for example. Suppose that it's an offset. Now, some people might have been thinking, "Hey, you know, let me just plug into my shader a distance from zero. Okay. So if grass is at a hundred, and you make a planet that's a thousand radius, what then? You're gonna go to your shaders and say, "Hey, shader, you know, I changed my mind. For this planet, it's gonna be at a hundred gra grass level. It's gonna be at a hundred units. And for this planet, it's gonna be at ten units. And at this planet, it's gonna be you're right." No, <laughs> I mean, if, if the Earth was twice its size, does that mean you're going to multiply all the mountains as twice their size? That makes no sense. You just have more surface area, right? So what I did is basically say, okay, regardless of how big this planet is, whether it's 10, 100,000, 10,000, whatever, you have more surface area, but still, plus one, you get grass, minus one, you get dirt. Yeah, I'm sorry, rock. Um, so it's actually eight different levels. Um, because I only have small hills here, you're only going to see this rock this sand, this grass right now. If I was to make this lower, there's actually more textures below this. 
And if you go higher than grass, you actually get cliff sides, you get mountains, and at the top you get snow. Uh, I didn't make it that high yet. Uh, mainly reason being is because I'm going to be doing this later. If some of you have used um, 3ds Max. You notice that you can add like filters. I think it's called filters. Oh, it's been a long time now. Um, but anyway, you can actually um, put uh, different uh, you know um, filters together to change your mesh and deformations and stuff like that. And they layer on top of each other. Um, it's kind of like that. So the first deformation of the mesh that I have is just called add bumps. That's it. Um, you know, Earth is not perfect smooth. If, if you walk even across a flat field in you know Sask Saskatchewan or something like that. Um, you know, as flat as it looks from a distance, when you get close enough, I'm sure you're going to have some kills and some bumps and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, nothing's perfectly smooth, right? So, in any case, um, think of it like that. So right now I have it more predominantly um, ex um, like extruded. Um, I don't know if that's the right word to say, but it's <laughs> uh, from, uh, I guess it's more predominant to the, the hills and, and the valleys, uh, just so I can show it in the video, but I'll probably have it less. Uh, than that is. Uh, right now they're also set uh, uh, at a, a certain period. I think it's like every well, a random of zero to uh, random zero one, or one, one being sort of a period. I can increase the period of a random from zero to two, zero to three, zero to four, and so on. And what it just means is that when a, when a period basically hits uh, zero, I believe it is, however large the period is, it kicks in and either pushes a bump up or a push down just a random fashion simple as that but it's done using aliasing because when i generate this uh, mesh for this planet i keep track of a point and all its neighboring points and a point and all its surrounding triangle faces as well and so that way i can say okay if you're going down then all the points around you are going down with you and then if you're going up all the points around you are going up too so uh, as you, if you do, if you go push this one up and then push this one down, and then you know, based on a random period, determines the the uh, how long it waits to before it pushes the next one up and the next one down, right? Which is a random. So it may go a little bit, and it may go much further, and it may go a little bit and a little bit further, and so on. It just goes around. It does that, and it just does it around, it circles around the every vertice in the entire planet to make sure none of them are missed, and it just determines a random amount. Is will I do? Will I push you up? No, okay, go to the next one. Will I push you up or down? And then if I do, if it is time, then I'll push it up or down. It's, it's just a random fashion. Simple as that. But the, because of the aliasing effect of where the surrounding pixels, sorry, <laughs> the surrounding vertices get pushed up or down, it affects the ones next to it, and it sort of causes them, um, almost like IK in, in uh, when you skin and bone a uh, mesh, when you kind of move the hand and the arm moves, and move the arm and the torso moves, they're all connected. It's like that. So... You push one point down, and the other points around it move down too. Now, I could smooth it more so that if one point goes down, the point other points around it go down. And then I could fan out and go through every single neighboring point around it and push it down too. Um, that would be more uh, smooth, but also more time-consuming. Um, uh, so, instead, what I'm, I am going to do it in stages. So, stage one, just create some bumps. That's all we want, just some bumps. Um, although I have the period set pretty high, I'm going to reduce the period and even the amount. So even, even the height of this, these hills would be like half the amount. So what I want is just small little wavy bumps around the planet, just to kind of give it a less of a perfect smooth look when you're actually walking on it. So as you kind of walk around, you can kind of gives a, a feel of a certain amount of you know, character and texture to the planet. And then that's going to be stage one, stage one, just give it bumps. That's it. Stage two, I'll add a, another filter on top of that, which will bump it more. And that's going to be have less periods. And in that iteration over the planet, it might create larger hills, right? Just slightly larger hills than these ones, maybe like three or four times the size. And then maybe a third iteration will be like mountains and with a much less period, right? But the way I have it set too is that because I know a point and its neighbors and those points... I can easily get the neighbors from those points. I can basically fan out in a um, iterative fashion and just simply say, okay, I'm going to go this way and I change my mind. I'm going to back up and then go this way and then change my mind back up and go this way randomly, almost like going through like a, a you know a tree, and then I can just create mountains. Simple as that. And then I'll just do the same thing where if I push one up, then I'll move the other points around it down and so on and so forth. And then so I'll just, I don't know what that's going to look like just yet, but I guess we're going to find out. And uh, 
you know, just kind of do it in stages rather than all at once. Uh, if you use, you know, some people use a Perlin noise. I'm not going to use Perlin noise. Uh, I like to think outside the box and just kind of experiment with other things. Um, yeah, <laughs> sometimes too, it's, um, I don't know. I just like to do things differently. If everyone's doing A and B, I like to do Z, like I said. <laughs> you know, just uh, do something completely different. Um, just see if it works. And when it comes to games, who cares, right? I mean, if you get the effect, people are happy. Nobody really cares how you got there. <laughs> I mean, if the game runs smooth and everything else, of course. But, uh, you know, game game development is all about... Uh, it's kind of, I kind of think of it like construction. It's like when you build a house and you're plastering. And, and uh, plastering is... What's the point of plastering, right? to kind of get rid of all the, the defects and the and the you know the, the cracks and everything else and you just plaster it over and wallpaper and paint it and then there you go beautiful house right all the ugliness hidden underneath it <laughs> but anyways um so that's pretty much it i mean this is just a well, you can see nice soft shadows um let me go ahead and actually run around the planet here too let me show you the other side i'm going to show you the dark side one more time there we go can't remember if I showed it to you or not, but let's do it. So these lines here, you can just ignore. They're just um, there for, uh, I think they're part of the uh, circular gravity force asset for showing me the where the gravity lines are. So we don't care about that. Just ignore it. There we go. There's some ambient lights here, so you can see. Otherwise, it wouldn't be very exciting. <laughs> um, obviously, yeah, I did actually have this uh, ambient turn to black at one point. I literally couldn't see anything, <laughs> which I guess if you're on it, oh, look at that. That looks nice. There you go. Oh, look at that. You can download this game, by the way. You can just go right now. Go to martianworlds.com. Check out the game. Give me some of your comments. Tell me what you think. Comment on the video as well. Subscribe if you want to know more. If you want to see more updates uh, on the progress of this and when I actually post new uh, versions of this. I'm going to actually go to, if you go to martianworlds.com uh, every once in a while, you might be able to see, I don't know if you can sign up there yet. I don't have any, yeah, because I just kind of threw a WordPress site on, on there right now. Uh, just something simple because I want to focus on the game at the moment. Uh, maybe I'll have a way for you to sign up and then you can stay tuned um, uh, using your email. For now, when I do have progresses, I am going to post them on the video. So if you actually just subscribe to the video uh, every time I post one, uh, you'll also be notified when to download the um, the program. You can just play it for free for now. Um, I am going to allow people to just play it for free for now. Um, I'll figure that out. I am going to release it on the Steam store at some point. Um, and, uh, you know, there'll be a lot more discussion on what my plans are in the future for all of this as well. But for now, I think I'll just release, you know, some demo versions that people can kind of play around with for free and give me some feedback. And you can be part of the journey with me, all right? So, also, if you go to martialworlds.com, you can also read a, a blog. I have an intro there of, uh, you know, where I've come from in this journey and, uh, you know, about my past history, I guess, in game development moving up to this point and what I've been through and so on and so forth, uh, if you want to kind of check that out. Um, otherwise, uh, just subscribe, stay tuned for the next one, and that's it. Thanks a lot. See ya.